What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. This is the Arroyo Show. My name is Brandon Arroyo. If it's your first time here, give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. What a guest we have for you today. You can see her portraying the role of Abby in the new series, uh, season two, actually, of Ginny and Georgia. Please welcome Katie Douglas. How you doing, Katie? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing awesome. We're starting to dry out here in L.A. finally, which has been several days coming, I guess. So it's good. How's everything up in Toronto? It's good. It's cold. I'm, we're not drowning the way that you guys are, but it's uh, properly gloomy right now, which I always I always kind of liked. It's a Toronto. January vibe. I mean, the gray yeah. skies, the chill in the air. It's, it's a good time of the year. Happy New Year, by the way. How was your New Year? Thank you so much. New Year was wonderful. Yeah, it's been a really... Um, overwhelming start to the new year with the show coming out and everything but yeah it's been um very um lovely how about you how'd you spend midnight anything exciting (laughs) yeah i was just honestly i was with all of my close friends and the people i love so what more could you ask for (laughs) couldn't ask for much more than that it's a little strange so you guys on the east coast do you watch the ball drop in times square or is there something different that they show on tv in toronto Yeah, it's the ball drop. It's the New York one. And for some reason, I feel like that's a childhood memory of mine. I haven't watched the ball drop since I was like a kid. It's usually up to something else. <laughs> it's so strange because here in L.A., they do show the ball drop at midnight, but you know it was three hours prior. So it's it, you're seeing the ball drop at midnight, but it's not quite exactly the ball dropping at midnight. Um, yeah, I okay. of New Year's. There's just an air of dishonesty to it. That you see, that is not the way that we want to start a new year with the TV lying to us because the TV usually tells us the truth, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, okay, so a very exciting stuff going on right now. Season two, I believe, just took over the number one spot again on Netflix. So a second season in a row. First off, congratulations on that. Um, what's it been like having people run up to you in the streets now saying, Oh my gosh, Abby from Ginny and Georgia, how's it going? It's it's super crazy, man. I don't know why we usually before we uh like release a season we're kind of sitting there like wondering are they gonna like it and then not saying that we're surprised when they do but it's like wow they really do like it um so it's enlightening it's like heartwarming it's just it's really cool to see people um to be there for people first of all and then to also have people um relate to your character Yeah, I mean, that's a character that I think so many people are able to relate to because she is someone that you can see struggling a little bit with, you know, trying to find her way. And what I really loved about what you were able to do in this past season is that you could see a lot of subtlety in Abby, I think, um, when someone would throw a comment at her in the basement that maybe wasn't even meant to be harmful towards her, but you could tell that it was sinking in. Could you speak to that and just the the subtleties that you find within uh, playing Abby? And I, I just, I don't know what it, what that experience has been like for you portraying a character like her. Portraying Abby, yeah, it's crazy. It's been a very um, different experience. I find that um, it's not the type of acting that I am usually used to and that it's it almost in a weird way feels more honest, which intimidated me and... Um, I don't know, the experience kind of lent itself to be um, like learning a different form of communication, that being just like a very honest and like true representation of what it actually is like to be a teenage girl. Um, So I I just felt like um, I was learning about Abby while the character Abby was also learning about Abby. So it's like growing up with this person who was dealing with all the same things that I know a lot of people deal with. and it's just unfortunately, like, actually, I, maybe it's not unfortunate, but she's celebrated sadly in a way that people relate to something that's that's actually quite all consuming and quite um, um, <laughs> disheartening. Like, like it's um, I just I, I feel like it's a well, I've been told that it's an important character and I've just kind of been feeling like um, it's important to to represent that person in the form of more of a friend. Yeah, and, um, and she she is an important character. I mean, when you look at the entire cast of Ginny and Georgia, I think one of the things that's done so well is that there's so many different types of people in that show that everybody will be able to relate to someone in the show. And if there's people that can't relate to Abby, maybe they'll be able to relate to Max or maybe they'll be able to relate to Ginny in some other different way. Um, that's one of the things that I, I really think 
the show does so well and explores even deeper, I think, in season two and specifically with Abby, he kind of explores some of her vices a little bit more deeply this season. And we yeah. we see her kind of indulging and in exploring these things. Um, what was your thoughts on Abby doing that and kind of embracing some of her I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say toxic, but nearly toxic traits that she has and, and embracing those a little bit more this season. I loved it. I loved the storyline this time around. It was so destructive um, in a very subtle way, like you said. Uh, I feel like so many people can relate to that, like the way that Abby deals with her shit. And at the end of the day, I think all that she wants is like, she the one thing she cares about more than anything is her friends and to be loved and to also just be to take, take a little bit of control back um which is where i saw that not not to say that it's she's incredible like being very very toxic and her methods of um self-soothing <laughs> but uh man i just thought it was so great to see that a little bit of honesty on on the script and uh <laughs> i i'm just i know a lot of people are relating to it and i'm just it's also funny uh, talking about it from, you know, the acting side of it, we got to see you working with some people that you didn't necessarily have some one-on-one -on -one scenes with in season one. Uh, spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't gone through season two just yet. Uh, we got to see you and Tony having a scene together that, um, uh, did, was that the first time that it was just Ginny and Abby hanging out together? Uh, I don't think it was. We had a couple scenes during the first season where Abby and Ginny kind of like established this weird uh chemistry and relationship it's like when she uh, gives her uh advice on getting her brother a therapist and confronts her in the hallway about uh uh jenny hooking up with marcus um and i think that that kind of uh foreshadowed the relationship that happened in season two but it was uh it's something and i think a lot of people are agreeing right now something about that relationship feels right and it feels um it it, it just felt very I don't know. I just love working with Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's, it felt like something that happened naturally, even though those two are seem like a combustible combination when you put the two of them together, Ginny and Abby. Um, can you talk about just what it was like to be working on set with Tony and in the performance that she put in this season and some of those scenes that we saw were so raw and so emotional this season um the the work that she and Brianna had done yeah right it was properly it was touching really it's funny those uh Brianna and tony are, are actors who are both very soulful people and they bring that to their characters even when a lot of the characters around them are not necessarily um that like diving into like they're more comedic than anything and um it was just moving it was moving to see them have the opportunity to um communicate like that uh, and then working with Tony is just wonderful because she's honestly like the coolest, like she's such a bro <laughs> at her core and she's a professional and, um, I don't know, just watching her work is, is so, uh, I just, it, you feel like you're, you're doing your craft. It was, I love working with Tony. <laughs> and I believe from, from what I heard, Tony was the, it, kind of art reflecting life the last of the uh actresses the young actresses to have met correct because you had already known uh sarah and chelsea prior to making that final cast correct and then the three of you had met tony at like a similar time yeah we actually did a chemistry read we did a, a read uh an audition before we were cast and then we actually really only met tony at the table read after everybody was cast when the first time that you saw the four of you together, the first time you saw Mang all together, what was that like? Did it feel like you guys had had caught something special there? It, I feel like the a lot of people were telling us that, like there was some weird type of dynamic that I guess there was a reason we were cast, and and um, it, it, there definitely was. Uh, we 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 what it was is that we became very inventive together, which is probably where you see that chemistry. I don't know. I always love to find this story. We didn't quite talk to you in, in season one, so let's bring it up in season two. Your booking story. How did you find out that you had booked the the role for Ginny and Georgia? And who were some of the first people you told? Who was the one who told you? God, it was funny. I, it was a time in my life where I I don't really know what I was doing, but I was um 
I was kind of just, uh, I had done a couple auditions for it and I was auditioning for other characters at the time. And then after the chemistry read, I remember thinking like, oh, this isn't the role for me. <laughs> I I, I, I've never played a character like this before. And I, I felt like, as a lot of actors do, um, that was terrible. That audition sucked. And then when I found out, it was very much a matter of just saying, okay, deal. Like, let's... <laughs> let's do this and let's do it right. So I, I honestly felt like after, from there on, I started working on the character and like really trying to explore her. But um, God, the first person I told was probably a roommate. <laughs> so, hey, I'm gonna be sticking around for a while. We gotta show this to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and were you located in Toronto at that point? Were you down here in oh, LA? I what? Yeah, yeah, I was in Toronto at the time. I didn't want to be, but then I stuck around. <laughs> They, they they were able to keep you around for another couple of months. Um, yeah. Okay. Speaking of keeping you around, you seem like somebody who doesn't stay put for very long. Um, you did some traveling in Europe, I believe, at the end of last year. Is that correct? I did. Yeah, I went all over Europe for months. And, and you recently drove all the way across the United States, which is something that very few of us can actually say. What is it yeah. about traveling that just really does it for you? That that you're you're such a big person on on getting out and seeing the world. Uh, it's probably just, I feel like traveling is learning and it's a change of environment. And it's also just, um, I don't know, it's decorating your time with, with, um, just something new or, or just, or maybe it's running away. I don't really know, to be honest with you, but, uh, there's also this feeling of like never really knowing where home is. And I mean, if it's not the place that you're staying, you might as well make it everywhere. When did that start? Have you always been someone who loved traveling? Like, did you did you travel much when you were growing up, or do you think now you're traveling because you hadn't traveled as much growing up? That's a good question. I actually, not really. As as a kid, I think I was always kind of very central because I felt like I had to be here for work. But now we're living in a world where everything is every the world is everywhere. Everything's online. You're doing self tapes. You can do self tapes from everywhere. And I just I'm very very eager to be <laughs> everywhere at once. So. And I guess the uh, the timing worked out well, too, because after that year of 2020, where so many of us were stuck inside for so long, it makes sense you'd want to be out and about. Um, yeah. When when did the whole acting journey start for you? What made you want to start acting? I was a child. I was six when I started, and it was not even an idea of mine. It was kind of weird how it happened. I uh, had a uh, both my parents worked, so I went to an after-school program, and then one day we just put on a play for the parents, and one of the parents happened to be a casting director, um, and they offered, they suggested that I go, <laughs> like, meet with a casting agent. My parents were so against it, but then, um, obviously, they wanted me to go to school and university down the line, so they thought it would be a quick little gig to make some money, and <laughs> the long, it, it never, like, I just never stopped doing it, even to this day, <laughs> so it's I don't really, I, I don't know. I, something is the one thing that's been consistent with me throughout my life is I think I found the art in it and I found um, it was a, a, it was language. It was a method of communication and storytelling. And that's like, I feel like when your reality isn't um, as, if you're not as content with your reality as you would like to be, you can always just dive into the movies.